Morning folks, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self-Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School. What I thought we'd do today is continue in kind of our training video series and talk about a raised bed that we make out here at the Pathfinder School. And we've been making raised beds out here for a long, long time. The first tripod-based raised beds that we used out here at the Pathfinder School were based on Scotty Kinder's design, who was one of the instructors here at the Pathfinder School back in probably 2011-12 time frame. We demonstrated this at Smoky Mountain Knife Works at one of our Dealer Days events there, I think in 2012, give or take a year or so. At any rate, since then we've used that tripod type raised bed for lots and lots of lessons here at the school in the bushcraft type classes where you want to make something off the landscape that will give you a bed that's raised off the ground without using a hammock necessarily. And what we've always done is we've either wrapped that with a wool blanket or we've used some kind of a cylinder sleeve like either a trash bag or a canvas bed sleeve. Recently, I've come up with a new way to make that raised bed without using any cordage or lashing tripods together. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. And then we're going to demonstrate the garbage bags on this raised bed, which I've done in past videos, talk about how to insulate that. And then we're going to go into looking at some new products that we're carrying on our website that are oil cloth from Bushcraft Spain. And we're gonna talk about a large tarp and we're gonna talk about a canvas bed sleeve that's still in development, and then a blanket slash tarp from Bushcraft Spain as well, all that we can combine together in more of a Bushcraft style shelter if we want to, and keep ourselves nice and warm, even in a colder weather environment. So stay with me guys and we'll get started. Okay, the materials for this raised bed are very, very simple as far as a emergency survival kit goes. If you are limited on the amount of cordage that you have, you wanna conserve that at every opportunity. This is a way to make a raised bed using no cordage whatsoever. And we're gonna need four forks of green wood. No material for this raised bed needs to be any larger than about three inches in diameter, as long as it's green. So we don't have to worry about having a bunch of complicated tools. A saw will cut every component for the shelter very, very easily. So we're going to need a spread on these forks that is large enough in diameter for about a four inch tree. And we're gonna pick two trees that are live and we're gonna use these forks in conjunction with that to make our tripod. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is we wanna find two trees that are about three full paces apart and about four inches in diameter. So, one, two, three. There's another one right here. These two trees are gonna work perfect and neither one of them is any bigger around than probably four inches, but they're alive. That's what we need, live trees. Now we've cut these forks about five to six feet, somewhere in that neighborhood from the top of the forks to the end of the leg. And we're going to basically interlock these forks on this tree so that they overlap each other and lock in place. And then we're going to kind of push them a little bit forward and push them solidly into the ground so that they can't slide forward or slide down. So everything, that, all the weight we put on this is going to do nothing but interlock this tripod in place. Okay, so you can see what we've done here is we have brought these legs forward. So they're on the tree at an angle this way and also an angle this way. What that's going to do is when we put downward pressure on it, it's going to lock these pushing pressure against the tree as well as downward on these pieces that's going to be friction held because our bag or our sleeve is only gonna be so wide and it's not wide enough to slide all the way down these two forks or these two uprights. So we've got two here, we have two here. Now for the most simplistic version of this raised bed, something you could do with your survival kit, we suggest people carry two six mil trash bags with them. This is part of the reason for that. The six mil trash bag will hold body weight and you'll cut the end of that bag out so that it is a hollow tube on both ends. We're gonna use two of these bags, we're gonna overlap them to create our raised bed mattress. Now we're gonna need two more poles that are at least as long as the distance between our two trees and give ourselves some overlap on both ends of that just to be safe. So these are probably 12 feet long and our space in between our trees is close to 10 feet long. So now what we're gonna do is, we're going to take one of our trash bags and we're going to thread it on to this one pole. 
just like that. We'll give ourselves some stick out on the end, and then we'll put another trash bag on her overlapping that. Now, we'll straighten up the bags, make sure everything's nice and neat before we load it onto the tripods. And once you've got this all set up and you're ready to put it in place, if you're by yourself, it's easier to pick the whole thing up like this and kind of walk between the uprights here and lay it down and come across. You may have to go pretty far up to get this one to pass by, depending on your overlap. And if your bag is overlapping your tripod a whole lot, you can always move that some, just like this. Now you've got a friction held bed that you can get into and lay down on and it's not gonna go anywhere. There's absolutely no cordage involved in this whatsoever. Now, you say you're laying on plastic, that's gonna be a bathtub if it rains. Well, that's where the tarp comes in. Thing's not going to fall over on you. It's friction held. It can only spread out as wide as these bags. And as long as the splay of your fork legs is wider than this span, it's going to be friction held. Now, before we talk about tarps and bed sleeves and all that whatnot, remember that this is a tube that you've got right here. So you can stuff that thing full of debris grasses, leaves, whatever you got around, and you're going to make an insulated mattress at that point that's going to block convection from underneath while you're sleeping. So stuffing this with insulation is part of the key to having that tube and part of the advantage of having that tube. So now let's talk about a couple things we can do here if we want to get a little bit more fancy than these trash bags or we want to add something to these trash bags. Obviously, you're not going to sleep directly on these bags. That would be silly. It's plastic. It's not going to be comfortable, and it's going to be noisy. Once you stuff it with leaves, you're going to reduce the noise dramatically. If you have something like a wool blanket or this blanket tarp that we are going to be selling starting Friday from Bushcraft Spain, you basically have an oilcloth base blanket here that you can use as a sleeping bag on top of this. So it's a wool blanket inner and an oil skin outer and it has tie out points on it so that if you need to you can use it for a tarp as well. And again this will be for sale on our website on Friday but this is something you could easily combine with this raised bed. Now if you want to take that one step further, as far as the bedding goes, instead of using the trash bags, you could use a bed sleeve. You could use something like this that was sewn from canvas material. That is the same type of hollow sleeve that's made from canvas. And it's got just a pass-through sleeve, exactly like your garbage bags, 
but it's one solid piece of canvas that is well sewn and grommeted in case you wanted to lash this thing together when you stuffed it with leaves for a ground pad or a ground mattress of some sort, a debris mattress. But it works very well for this application as well. We're working on developing this again. I have had these in the past. Very difficult to get consistent quality and consistent reliable production numbers. So I'm looking at sourcing this other places, but it is still in development. Now, you can also make this yourself. You went and bought the canvas, I'm sure. It's not that difficult. It's virtually the same width as these trash bags and the same length as two of them together. That will work for you as well. The trash bags are gonna be fine for a couple, three days, especially if you don't have a bunch of knots and things on your branches, you've trimmed them off and you've got the straightest branches you can find. And these aren't necessarily straight, but they work. Now, let's talk about what we do to put a tarp over the shelter to keep ourselves dry inside and still be warm. That's the key. If we stuff the mattress with debris, we're gonna be warm because we're not gonna have the convection problem. So that's going to keep us warm. If we wanna use a fire for warmth, that's something different altogether. And we can do that if for some reason we don't have debris. Maybe you're in an area where there's snow and you can't get debris to stuff this thing with because it's covered in snow. So you've got to figure out a way to manipulate fire to give you heat through this. That can be done. We'll talk about that right now. Okay, so the next step is covering ourselves from the elements with some type of tarp. The tarp I have here is a 10 by 10. You can see it's not that big. A 10 by 10 oil cloth tarp from Bushcraft Spain. Also will be available on our website on Friday. We have to think about the ridge line for this tarp. Do we want to cut another stick and set it in the forks or splice two forks or splice one fork on one end and use a fork method for ridge pole? Or do we want to just use the ridge line that we carry in our kit anyway? The 30 foot ridge line. And I would say you're probably carrying that anyway in your emergency kit. I would use that in lieu of a pole. The only thing the pole is going to give you is more stability. But if you really crank down on that ridge line, it'll stay pretty well for you. Okay, I'm going to show you a little trick here. You've got a large tie out loop here. And you could put your prusik loop right here and put a toggle in it. But pulling that tight, you're going to get down to about right here. And because our tarp is already longer than it needs to be because we have a nine foot span versus a 10 foot tarp. We wanna get this thing as close as we can. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a T-stick and I'm gonna come in here just like this, but I'm not gonna stop there. I'm going to wrap it around here, pull it through, turn it over, and I'm gonna pull it through that loop one more time, creating a windlass, just like That. You want it tight. Make sure we're in the hole here. There we go. Now, what that's going to do is that's going to hold that tight and it's not going to move. We can slide it all the way up against the tree and no matter how hard we pull on it, it's not going to move because we created a windlass with this tightening that around the line. Now on the other end of this tarp, I already know this tarp's longer than I need it to be. So I'm gonna step back one tie out. I'm gonna use this slippery loop that I used at the end of my ridge line to capture that with a toggle, just like this. And I'm going to pull that slippery loop as tight as I can, and I'm gonna lock it off with a half hitch. Just like that, all right? And then I can just roll the rest of my cordage up in Hank fashion and store it when I'm done. Call that good. And then we'll move on to the rest of the shelter, staking things out and whatnot. Okay, so we've staked out the one corner here on the front side. 
we put another stake one tie out in to match the tie out on the tarp that we use with the toggle and then i've pulled that wing that that left over over to the side on this side to block wind and weather from getting into the shelter now i am using plastic stakes for this demo obviously you could woodcraft or bushcraft your stakes if you chose to do that but because i was basing this in the original context of the video on your emergency kit i would always recommend carrying plastic stakes in your kit for obvious reasons you don't have to make stakes on the fly when you absolutely need them and you have another fire starting resource with this stake now on this side i've only staked in the corner grommet and the center grommet and i've left these open so that I have a way to get into the shelter and into the bed. And once I'm in, I can just flop this over the top. I can put a tie string. If I wanted to, I could tie a piece of string on this to tie this down to here. Block a little more wind if I wanted to, but it's not absolutely necessary. I've got some overlap there enough I count. You stuff that mattress and that setup right there will keep you really nice and warm. You've got an automatic drip line set up as far as your tarp goes on this end because you've got that half hitch on there, which gives you the drip line with that line being inside the tarp. On the other end, you may want to tie a drip line on there. Now, one thing you could do here, and this is our open door flap to get in and out, but we could always drive a stake in the ground that we could take this loop, this corner loop, and pull it over to and place it over that stake to hold this down in place to block even more wind and weather once we're inside the shelter and then just pop it off the stake and flip it aside to get in the shelter. Now you've got Plenty of heat trapped inside here on a cold night. And again, if you stuff this mattress, you're going to be in really good shape. Now let's talk about not being able to stuff the mattress and how we control heat that way, possibly using fire. All right, so what do we do if we can't stuff this bed? and we're gonna have problems with convective issues. We can fly this tarp out, put a couple Y sticks in the ground to guide the tarp out, use a couple pieces of bank line off our roll to stake those out, and we can put a fire out here. Now, the problem with that is the fire is gonna be at this level and your bed is gonna be at this level. So even though heat rises, you don't have anything convective going on here. So you're gonna need some kind of a fire wall behind that fire, obviously, to kind of force some of that heat into this area. And then you probably would want to take your emergency space blanket, being an emergency scenario anyway, as we first discussed, and use it first on your ridge line, even if you have a tarp, and bring it all the way to the ground and inward at an angle on the bottom underneath this bed to kind of create a convection oven type situation where that bed was being heated up. And then you're obviously not going to want to sleep directly on the plastic you want to sleep on your swagman roll, your wall blanket, whatever the case may be that you would sleep on on the ground anyway. So it's no different than sleeping on a trash bag browse bed with your swagman or your wool blanket. So you've eliminated the conduction issue, but now you've got a convection issue to worry about. If you can stuff this mattress, you no longer have an issue with convection. So the advantage to a raised bed is, number one, the browse bed situation is the same. If you're gonna sleep on the ground, you need four inches of leaves compressed. If you're gonna sleep in this, you probably need four inches of leaves compressed to battle either conduction or convection. However, this gets you off the ground, away from moisture, away from dampness, and away from inclement weather. And that's the big advantage of a raised bed in an eastern woodland environment. In a more southern environment, obviously there are lots more advantages to having that raised bed. But I wanted to discuss this with you guys today. I wanted to discuss this new 10 by 10 Bushcraft Spain oil cloth tarp that's coming out. And a lot of guys are going to ask me in this video, well, how's the quality compared to Tinsmiths? On par for sure. 
you will not be disappointed in this 10 by 10 tarp. I guarantee it. They also have the blanket that I showed you that is oil cloth backed. That also has tie out points on the corner so you can use it for a tarp. Those will both be live on our website on Friday. The important lesson or takeaway here from the training is how to make a raised bed using no cordage. The only time you'll need cordage and you really don't have to have it then is for your ridge, but you should already be carrying that cordage with you anyway. If for some reason you don't, you can always put a pole across there and accomplish the same thing and make wooden stakes and virtually no, use nothing of your kit except the two trash bags and some kind of a space blanket or tarp. All right, guys, thanks for joining me out here for this lesson on making a raised bed with no cordage and look at a couple new products coming to the Pathfinder website on Friday from Bushcraft Spain. I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, for our business, all our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends, and I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.